Welcome back to ESA Winter 21. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fondant. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Koei Tecmo Europe, publishers of Neo 2 The Complete Edition, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now it's time for Kazo and Yanners running B Music Source. Take it away. Hi, well, um, I'm Beachside Bunny on Twitch.tv and Orin Yanners which is my username everywhere else. Um, me and Kazo, we play this rhythm game a lot, and uh, <laughs> we thought we would show it to you guys for charity, of course. So anything else that should be said? I'm not really sure. Welcome to the world of BMS. <laughs> I'm here in commentary with Dolphin. Yeah, that's and me. We're gonna, and we're going to tell you everything you need to know. Um, Yanners, feel free to start. All right, I'll start with subconsciousness then. Yeah, that's gonna be just something easy so you will see what exactly this game is about because, well, BMS, to put it very shortly, it's a VSRG or it stands for a Vertical Scrolling Rhythm Game. So we pretty much have a chart with notes and you have to click them at the correct time. Sounds probably simple enough if you know Guitar Hero or whatever else which you've already seen. So this is just an example so that you will, you know, understand what's going on because later on after this chart it's gonna get significantly more difficult. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, the funny thing about VMS, it's a very traditional type of rhythm game, as you can see, it's just notes falling down. But the interesting thing is that every single note you see that's dropping down on the screen has a sound tied to it. So when you press the key, it'll make a sound, and that's a part of the song. Which means that if you play, like, incorrectly, press the wrong notes or miss time, then the song is gonna sound quite off. Oh, <laughs> just notice that Nyanners did an example there. Yeah, what I, how I usually call it is that it's a blessing and a curse at the same time, because mm. the, be the better you play, the better it sounds, but if you make a mistake, it's sometimes difficult to get back, because oh, yeah. you have to somehow figure out, oh my god, I missed this pattern, now where am I exactly in this specific sequence of notes, and you have to kind of figure this out in the middle, when it doesn't sound too well, so it's, incre so it's increasingly difficult. Mm. Uh, something fun, I just want to mention something fun about this particular song called Subconsciousness. Uh, this song is basically like, it's composed of a lot of like sound effects from a game called Yume Nikki. Many people might be familiar with it, it's a famous like searching uh, horror-ish game. And uh, like, this song was made in 2008 uh, for a BMS starter package. Uh, so this was included as a beginner song for a lot of people, and it's become a very iconic song in the game. Yeah, a lot actually, of people are mentioning that this game is a bit quiet on the stream. Yeah, actually one thing that I would also like to mention is that, you know, we said that it's a rather traditional type of rhythm game, but, well, traditional is one way to put it, it's also kind of extremely old in a way. Right? Like, wh when was the first player actually created? Was it like BM98, right? And it's exactly mm -hmm. the year? Or am I yeah. mistaken in here? No, no, no. Well, Beat Mania was invented in 1997, and then BM98, a fan clone of Beat Mania, was made in 98. Yeah, because you need to keep in mind that this is a completely different game from what 2DX is, even though the gameplay is rather the same. But all the music that you will hear and see here is created by the community. And also not entire not only not only the music, but also everything you see and hear, like the players themselves, the skins, uh, and the, all the music is created just by the people who are passionate about the game. Mm. Alright, so uh, Nyanus is bringing up the two Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> to insane levels, so now you're gonna see what this game is really about at high levels. Uh, now you're gonna really see what this game is about when you get to the higher levels. It gets dense and fast and high intensity, and it's really exciting to see. Yeah, it's like per two minutes, because standard song usually is around two minutes, you have in these difficulties from 2,000 to 3,000 notes. Yeah. <laughs> so you can pretty much imagine how many notes is that per second. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This song is also really cool. Agreed. Uh, if I recall correctly, this song is from like 2012, which is honestly quite like it's starting to become a quite a while ago. But like the music quality is so up to speed, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I wouldn't and even I wouldn't even know if you didn't tell me that it's mm. from 2012. Mm. And I think. Um, 
it's it's just so impressive that all of these songs, like you mentioned, are made just by fan creators doing this. Like, it's just a labor of love, if you get me. Yeah, we could kind of explain about BMS events because that's how you like publish music for this game specifically. Yeah. Do you want me to elaborate on it? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. So uh, every single year, there's a number of BMS events, as we call them. They're practically speaking like tiny competitions and contests for people to basically make a BMS song uh, with key sounds and background animations and uh, note charts, and then submit it for anyone to review. It's a public, open competition. Anyone can submit. Anyone can review. So usually what happens is that you have like ten pools of artists, sometimes hundreds, that submit the songs, and then players like like me and you and everyone who's just playing the game, they will play, download the songs, play them in their games, and then give them a score. Like usually from like one through five or a hundred to a thousand points, and that's often how a lot of people get uh, attention in um, in this game and in the genre. And this is often actually a huge gateway to like getting big gigs with like the Japanese game industry as well. Yeah, there are situations when people started creating music for BMS events and then ended up in some kind of popular or other rhythm games, either for mobile or even arcades. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Let's get to Eurobeat. Oh yeah. It's time. It's officially time. Oh yeah, it's Eurobeat time. God, this brings me back to the 90s. <laughs> Wait, how old is this song actually? It's actually not that old. I think this song in particular is from like 2018. Let me oh, check. okay. Uh, this is... It's from 2014, my bad. This is from the event called Go Back to Your Roots uh, 2014, which is a part of the BMS of Fighters series of BMS events, which is like the biggest one that happens every single fall since 2004. Still going strong. And that event genuinely gets like um, hundreds of entries every single year. Like yeah. ranging from like 300 to 600 at times. And the music library just grows and grows and grows up to the <laughs> point where you download every single event and you have like 800 gigabytes of songs. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, but as you can see, this is like I, I could actually say something about random muscle memory and all that. Oh because yeah, I, it might be kind of difficult to understand how does it work that he can actually read that because you know you've seen speedrunners performing like five frame perfect tricks in a row, and this is pretty much the same thing. It's just lots and lots and lots of practice, uh, where you put so much dedication into this specific game, and you might think that okay, he maybe memorized the chart, right? Because it's going too fast for him to be able to read it. And not only that's not the case, but we can specifically show that because uh, Nyanrus, as far as I remember, plays on so-called random mode. I play on random. Yeah, hmm. so every single lane that you see in the song, it has seven lanes and then one special one for the scratch. All these seven lanes are shuffled with each other, so you never know which notes are gonna end up wherever. For example, when you have a kick on button number one, and this kick would be normally on button number one throughout the entire song, but if you play with random, it's put somewhere else, for example, let's say button number four, and you have to read live whenever you play the song. So you never know what you're gonna end up with. Mm. Basically, like, in short terms, like, all the lanes are shuffled, except for the turntable one, the yeah, one where yeah. you use the turntable. Uh, should probably mention that you can play this game without that special unique controller. That's <laughs> it's a very novelty controller. That, Sorry. You can say that, but oh, <laughs> I ran into an issue. My bad. Oh, doesn't happen all the time. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I just got startled. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so, um, but yeah, you don't have to play with a special controller. You can play this game perfectly fine on keyboard. I've done so for years, even though I do have that controller that N Nanos is using. And a lot of yes. people even use like MIDI keyboards, like piano keyboards. Yeah, it's, it's definitely in the minority. Noting, it's also worth noting that for a long time the best BMS player was indeed a keyboard player. Mm, so um, there, there is no real advantage or disadvantage to what input method you use, whether it be a controller or a keyboard. It literally just boils down to your dedication. And it, it, they, they kind of balance each other out because you would think that on a keyboard, 
grasses would be a lot more difficult, right? Because you don't have a turn table, obviously. And while that might be true, there are some patterns that controller players struggle with. So each, each playstyle has an advantage and a disadvantage. So I think it's, it's impossible to say that one is better than the other. Yeah, but then again, uh, if you play on random, you kind of lose or gain an advantage depending on what you end up with. So it's mm. really difficult to compare keyboard to controller. Very keyboard difficult. is just most... It's just what most people start with just because, you know, it's something you have. And yeah. you, you usually don't have such a controller just available <laughs> just next to you. Around. Especially especially if you live somewhere where you have you don't have arcades, so you can't just go to an arcade and check it out for yourself. So most people if they will eventually end up wanting to get one, they will either build one themselves or just buy. Absolutely. Oh yeah, um, it's also worth mentioning that the DIY scene for controller building is very huge in the event. Yeah, oh, I yeah. was so surprised when I got into it. There's a lot of like DIY recipes and it's really cool to see. Yeah, like, like my first two controllers for this game were self-made. Oh, that's cool. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I did two controllers for this game and then they are still somewhere. But I have no idea where when I you know when I bought the one that I use right now. I'm playing on the same one that Nyanos is using right now, which is one to one exactly the same as you will see on the arcade. So if Nyanos actually wanted to go to an arcade, he will have no problems in you know transitioning to a bigger screen because that will pretty much be the <laughs> whole difference. This song is such a classic, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's one of the I most was, classic songs I was in about DMS. To say, yeah, this song is incredibly iconic. Mm. And the composer of this song is, uh, he also made another song that uh, some of the viewers might recognize in, in chat, ACL, it's from oh, a yeah. novel, I forgot the name. It's from Umineko. Yeah, right, it's from Umineko. Um, um, are there any donations lined up, by the way, since we're yes, at the end of the song? Yes, in fact, we have all kinds of donations lined up, thank you for asking. We have a $10 donation here from Anonymous. No comment, just generosity. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for your donation. And that, of course, went towards the Super Mario All-Stars Any% percent bonus game Wacky World of Miniature Golf. That's the last incentive that we are trying to unlock. That's great. Uh, if you want, you can mention one more if you want. Oh, all right. Well, we also got a, an anonymous donation for $35 towards the exact same incentive. I do want to point out the fact that we are more than halfway now to unlocking that incentive. We are looking for $2,469 to unlock it. And we are growing incredibly close to having raised Forty thousand dollars for all timer fund, and we're only wow. a little over twelve hundred dollars away from that. that so, if we unlock that incentive game, which will mean you know more um, ESA, which I definitely want to see, we will also have raised over forty thousand dollars. So I believe we can do it. That's great. Keep on donating, people. It's for oh, a good and cause. This one with the scratches. Oh yeah. Uh, I just noticed that the tempo. That when the tempo slows down, so does the note speed. And usually in the BMS context, we call that a soft land uh, because it stems from a song called Soft Landing on the Body, and then Japanese people basically like murdered that word and turned it into soft land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but every time notes slow down, it's actually not easier to read them because they oh, no. then compose themselves into more dense patterns, and it's actually more difficult. The reason why all the notes usually flow so fast is because it's actually easier to read because they have less stuff on the screen to focus on. Yep. So this one, when it slows down, is exceptionally difficult. And also, holding the rhythm on so dense scratches is also quite a feat. I think the best analogy I've seen uh, for why we use high speeds in rhythm games like this is uh, if you're like at the sub uh, subway station and you have like these tickers for like destination and whatnot, it's really hard to read if the text is like super compressed and like scrolling by slowly. But if it scrolls like spaced out but at a high rate, it's very easier to read. Nice play. Yeah, that great play. Awesome. That's Thank great. You. It's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky to not um, mess up the BPM change scratch mm. walls. <laughs> so this is actually one of my uh, favorite songs uh, as of recently. I've become kind of obsessed with it. Um, it starts out kind of slow, but the second half is pretty good. I think maybe you guys mm. will like it. 
that's cool. Uh, actually, this song, uh, it's very wholesome because this song is from a particular BMS event that's specifically intended for like newcomers to the scene. Uh, it's from a event series called Mumei-sen, uh, which is like Jap a Japanese word for like no name, as in someone who doesn't have a name for themselves yet. And uh, this that event is like locked so that only people who have not made BMS before can uh, join that event. So it's very open for newcomers as well. Like if you're fresh to making music or fresh to making BMS, it's very there's a lot of like places for you to like kickstart your career inside of BMS. Oh, like there's so many people who are gonna be kind of forced to listen to it anyways if they want to play your charts. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very good see, song. Yeah, I can see this one is very hard on Gachi. Yeah. Gachi is a technique where you essentially, like, it, you treat every note, every combination of notes seriously, as in you lift your hands every time before each pattern, so it really eats up your stamina. It's pretty mm. intensive on the wrist, since most, most of the power tends to come from the wrist, and you yeah. leave your fingers kind of loose, and you bounce it up, like, up and down. Yeah. Because in most cases, you'd like just uh, use your fingers and like try to play the motions more like smoothly into yeah. each other. To explain, it's hard to explain without like actually being there and like demonstrating with hands. <laughs> Think of like every other pattern as being on a wave with a skateboard. You're riding the wave and you don't really want to break it, but with patterns like these, you have to reset your hands into a certain position after every note to bring your fingers back down in order to hit accurately. Mm. Great play. Nice yeah, one. Pretty fun chart. Definitely one of my favorites. As a yeah, player. it looks fun. Um. By the way, we could mention something about the difficulty scale to give you an idea of how oh, yeah. far is it actually. Because the first song you've seen on the exhibition today was a so-called normal 2. So you have a normal scale, which, uh, which is from 1 to normal 12. And mm -hmm. then after that, if you can play 12s and you want to go even further, you can play an insane scale, which are insane from 1 to pretty much in most cases however you want, but they usually also stop at around 13 and then you have the overjoy scale which goes even higher so well these ones that you see right now are around insane 18 and 20 as i can see so well that can probably give you an idea of how high is it actually it goes up to 24. yeah it goes up yeah, all the way to 24 scale. but the yeah. insane scale and the overjoy scale for instance they overlap yeah they kind of tiny overlap. bit yeah But yeah, this is way into the insane scale, so this is past like the beginning, like even like even way past the tutorial and way past like well into the game as it is, because like once you get to level like 9 or 10 on the normal scale, that's like when you're a quite average talented player, like that you're quite good then. That's like, you're, you're quite skilled, but then you people like to push themselves ridiculously high. So that's why we have these insane, like, uh, separate insane scale for, like, rating ridiculously hard charts. Yeah, and they're kind of strictly tied with uh, what we call dance, which are the, uh, which are a way to measure where your skill currently stands in the game. Uh, if you want to kind of know that you are this good at this moment, that's what you play. You play dance, which are kind of like courses, which are composed of four different songs you have to play after each other on a single gauge which you can see on the bottom below the notes. This is the gauge that measures your current performance. So we play four charts in a row with a single gauge that you have available. And if you manage to keep alive throughout these four songs, you then get this specific rank, whichever you were aiming for. Mm -hmm. And there's also 10 of them for the normal scale. There's 10 normal dance. Then there's 10 insane dance. And after that, there's two more, which is insane Kaiden and insane overjoy. <laughs> and Nyanur's currently is insane Kaiden. So one below the most difficult one which mm. is ridiculously difficult yeah. yeah also like insane overjoy only like a handful of people in the entire world actually has that ranking there, there are currently around 16 or 18 overjoy players yeah 
It's not, it's, uh, it's very difficult to reach that level, like, you'd think the step, like, it, since it's just one step above, you'd think that it wouldn't be too hard, but it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a significant step, because, like, usually in the easier dance, whenever you say, for example, you go from normal 5 to normal 6, it's kind of small, the difference is kind of small, and you might be able to get it quite soon, if you get one of them, mm. but for Insane Kaiden and Overjoy, it's, wow, it's a completely different story. Mm. This be an okay time for some donations? Sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, I have a fifteen dollar donation here from Sleep Cheap. who says less than three to all for a good cause, and that one again went towards unlocking Big John's bonus run of the Wacky World of Miniature Golf. I also have a five dollar donation here from Zola, who says on my way to the BMS town. <laughs> Shout out Zola. He's in a. Uh... He's in our community. Mm. It's a little inside joke that we have. So BMS is not uh, an arcade game. It's a game for your PC. Mm. Um, and so arcade places usually have cabinets. And obviously BMS being a Windows game, it doesn't have a cab. So we just kind of joke about having a BMS cab every now. Yeah, as in an arcade cabinet. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, eventually someone's going to make one. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I have seen people who have made, like, BMS cabinets. Yeah, it, it go, like, it goes even further than making just a controller. Like, there's people who make entire cabinets, fan-made cabinets for whatever mm. game they're playing. And, like, showcase them at, like, um, like uh, conventions and whatnot. Yeah, you know, you can start with a bar top Tetris, and then eventually you get to BMS cab. <laughs> uh, should maybe mention that uh, for playing BMS, since it's very, like, um, not a centralized community like many other games have. There aren't, there isn't like this one game that you can play. There's a lot of different clients or like software clients that you can uh, download to play BMS. It's all started with BM98 in the 90s, but now most people use um, either Lunatic Rave 2, which is quite out like old by this point, but still widely used. And then you have Beetle Raja, which is more modern and still in development. Yeah, the reason we call it B Music Source in the category is because this is the file format that is used to play the songs. And there's Indeed. dozens and dozens of players which support that format. So it's kind of difficult to call it a specific game yeah. because it's rather a category of rhythm game that you play. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's more like a category or like you often say BMS to like refer to like the entire community and its contents. Yeah. Uh, can I get a word on clear types? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Do you want to take it, Kozo? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, there are several types of clears uh, in in BMS, and you can see that this gauge that you see on the bottom of the screen below the note is sometimes changing its color. Oh, I'm sorry. Give me a second. Yosha! Yosha! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Something. Uh, messed up on my on my PC. But well, anyways, uh, just to finish on the clears. Uh, there's several types of clears in the game. Uh, there's X hard, hard, normal, uh, and, and easy clear. So as you can see on the bottom of the screen, there's the gauge which sometimes changes colors depending on how well Nyanus performs in the song. And basically, the better you play, the easier it is for you to keep your gauge while you're playing. And eventually you will have a better lamp next to the song that you're playing. For example, right now, you can see 100% of the EX hard clear gauge, which is the most difficult one. So every single mistake, so every single mistake that you're making is costs you much more. And then eventually, if you fail that one, you drop to a gauge that is a little bit easier, but still very brutal. This red one that you can see right now, which is the hard gauge. And if you drop that one as well, you have easy and groove, in which case you have to... you need to have more than 80% in order for your play to be considered a clear. So obviously everyone aims for the best one to see the best color of the lamp right next to the song. A lot of people like it. Like, it's not like... Uh, it's too to like keep pushing yourself for like the best uh, achievements again. It's kind of like uh, collecting trophies in a different game. Yeah, in a sense. exactly. Which is why a lot of people try to go for like folder lamps, uh, which may basically means that you have like gotten a single type of lamp on every single song inside a specific folder. Which can be like that folder could be dedicated for like to every single uh, level 12 insane chart, for instance. So if you want yeah. that folder to have like the easy clear lamp, then you have to play every single song on at least uh, easy gauge. 
Yeah, I could definitely say that in the case of BMS, most people aim for clears rather than score. But yeah. you can also mention something about scoring, because you can see on the screen that there are like these colorful grades, there's also these yellow grades, and you know, other ranks that you can get. So this colored grade, this blue in that case, is called a perfect grade, and you get it if you click the note, well, as perfectly, as close to perfection as you can get, which is around, I believe, 20 milliseconds uh, timing window in Differs both from directions. game to game. Yeah, it, yeah, it differs Slightly. from game to game, also differs from, from chart to chart as well, but I can yeah. say that it's around that value. So, yeah. for each perfect grade you get, it's two points, for each grade you get, it's one point, and for everything else, it's just zero. So, mm. it's very, very brutal. It's very strict. But the good thing about getting a good, for instance, doesn't mean that you lose your gauge. You only lose score out of it. So it's still like beneficial in a sense to get that uh, rating. Oh, we're getting some modern music. Yeah, we're gonna hear the obligatory future house squeaky chair. <laughs> oh yeah. This genre took BMS by storm in like 2014 and 2015. It was kind of crazy. It was cool though. It was, a lot of good music came out of it. Oh, I can see the random condensed a lot in the middle. Yeah. That's gonna be difficult because the hand that is closer to the scratch has to take care of so many notes at mm -hmm. the same time. Oh, those these scratches look actually like quite fun compared to everything else I've seen so far. <laughs> Ridiculous stuff. Oh man. God damn, the skill involved in this. Crazy. <laughs> I tried to style at the end and I guess I could <laughs> This being hey, okay time to talk about donations? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. All right, I have a $20 donation in here from Not in KY who says, I love learning about these unique games and gaming communities. Thanks, ESA, and thanks, runners. Thank oh, you, thanks. Not in KY. Not more. <laughs> Hopefully you are enjoying the show as much as I am. Yeah, Feel free to really join the community. Well. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of play, uh, like uh, places for the, our community, and we have a lot, a lot of guides as well for like learning how to get into the game and learning how to make content for the game as well. Yeah, that's another important thing to mention that I wanted to mention earlier. BMS is not only about the game; it's it's the culture of music. Mm. It's being able to exchange. Uh, your creations with people around the world for them to play and or enjoy musically. It's just something that I think not many games that are currently out there can offer. Yeah, yeah. there's actually a surprising amount of people who focus solely on making music for BMS and not even playing it themselves. I'm yeah. one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's also the opposite spectrum. I mean, there are a lot of people who just play the game, for example, me. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Thanks, thanks to BMS, actually, I've discovered so much music that I would have never imagined myself listening to a couple of years ago. And I think I think that's pretty amazing. That's why I get a little emotional about this. And another thing that's nice about the music made for BMS is that since there are no, like, there's no money involved, no, like, restrictions from a publisher or whatever, it's all, like, music that the artists themselves want to make, so a lot of it's very genuine. And you can, like, you can tell that it's very genuinely made. 
Yeah, to be honest, you have absolutely no idea how much the music taste changed when I started playing BMS. And rhythm games in general. I was I was mainly listening to metal before I even started, and then you know I was like, oh, electronic music, man, ah, get me with that. <laughs> Quite the I don't jump. care. And yeah, <laughs> and right now it's completely different. Like it's it it's turn it just turned over 180 degrees. Mm. And usually whenever someone is making a chart for an event or so, uh, it's not a single person that's doing the music, the chart, the video, they usually form teams oh, yeah, that right, dedicate right. themselves to creating a specific work. Mm. That's very true. Uh, a lot of people either collaborate with a uh, video, uh, uh, like video animator to create the background animation for the song. Oh, a random in the end. That was oh, difficult. Right. I that think that's crazy. Uh, time for me. Yeah, I think it's time to change. Um, well, thank you all for watching my part of the showcase. We're going to be switching over to Kazo. He plays DP. This double was play. SP, short for single play. And now you'll be seeing DP, short for double play. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy that section yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm going to still be commentating for uh, Kazo's uh, turn oh. as well. So I hope you stick around to see uh, some uh, interesting gameplay because things are going <laughs> to change up quite a bit now. They will. And I'll be also the, I'll be also commentating. Yes, for, for Kaza with, yeah. with together. Let with me Dolph. just move my mic and I'll get ready. So awesome. as they mentioned, we are going to a short intermission. Please don't go anymore. There anywhere there will be more face melting, exciting rhythm game action momentarily. Now it's time for Kazo with more B Music Source. Take it away. All right, thank you so much. So, hello everyone, I'm Kazo, and as you will see in just a while, I'll play this game on uh, two parts of the controllers at once. It's not necessarily one player to controllers or anything like that, it's actually a completely different, less popular, but still quite popular game mode. So, well, you're, you probably understand what the game is about already, so I can just get it going right away. Um, Dolphin, Yanners, over to you. Yes, thank you. Now, you, uh, like uh, Kaso just mentioned, uh, it's going to be a gameplay with two parts of the controller, as in you're going to have uh, 14 keys and then two turntables. And this game, it, like this game mode, is crazy. Uh, he mentioned that not too many people play it, but it's, it's still like quite popular. It has like relatively active big scene, and a lot of people will, will demand you to make charts for it, <laughs> which is fine, obviously. Uh, it's good practice, but uh, the big difference here is that you're very limited with how you can uh, hit the notes and you're also, it also makes uh, timing a lot harder than just playing on a single side or a single controller. And Kaso is absolutely destroying this chart. Well, I picked them in order so that I will play the easiest one to the hardest one I picked on my playlist. Ah, I see. Well, I'm <laughs> very looking forward to seeing the hardest charts you decide to play then. That's gonna be very exciting. So, the meta game of this is very different from playing just 7 key mode, or, or single play as it's also called. Well, for, for DP players especially, there's a lot more... Uh... You're, the the, the playstyle you have to use is a lot more dynamic because obviously there are seven keys and a turntable on each side, and as you might all be aware, the average human has five fingers. <laughs> uh, so, uh, unlike S key, you can't cover every single key and the turntable at the same time. So there are some patterns that are not very possible to hit. For example, the first key and the turntable, since nobody's hand is that big to hmm. achieve that kind of reach. And so, um, usually, in comparison to an SP player that will use the option random, DP players generally rather do not use that option. Because it can or cannot create those impossible patterns. Hmm. 
Damn, I wasn't really sure if I can get an X heart on this, but that's okay. <laughs> that's <sighs> fine. You're gaming. Oh. Nice shirt, by the way. <laughs> so, and this was one of the easier songs you mentioned? I mean, I wouldn't say, of course, I wouldn't say easy, but easier than easier. the other ones I have, right? <laughs> That's the expression I usually yeah. use. Whenever I say something is easy, I'm gonna screw it up right away. So I rather <laughs> avoid this word. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I would say that the skill floor for getting into double play is a lot higher than on single play, just because there's a lot more to keep track of. And usually, like, it's hard to, like, make a chart that's, like, uh, still like uh, fun and uh, how do you put it like engaging on such a low level in, in double play Very as compared to uh, single play so i guess as a player i would argue that um it definitely is a lot more difficult to get into however comma <laughs> pretty comparable oh yeah in the end in, you, 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 you would be wrong to assume that these game modes uh, are, uh, I guess, similar in any way to compare them at that level, but generally speaking, I wouldn't say that one is harder than the other. Mm. There's just no. two, different, two different charting metas and uh, a variety of different things to them that make them great on its own. Yeah, the uh, it's it's two, you have to consider them two different games essentially. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's what I was trying to get at. Mm, mm. And also the <laughs> the price point for getting into it with the controller is also significantly higher. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why that's why it builds to in the beginning. This is the only reason. You need two of them for yep. the, for the big one. Yeah, or the big one with both sides. Yeah. I still remember the moment where I made the scratch out of plexiglass glued with hot glue to an encoder. <laughs> but whatever buttons I could find. Oh my god. Those were the times. I played 11 some that. <laughs> Ghetto controller. <laughs> so, I mean, I do not play double play mode. I'm familiar with Oh no! Do. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> that ending every time gets me. Okay. Aww. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> You're still doing great, though. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, you're yeah. doing... Like, oh. Even if you do fail, that's very highly skilled. It's I guess crazy. It's Double A as well. BMS charts are infamous for having a difficulty spike right at the end. Oh, yeah. Would um, this be a good time for some donations? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah sure. Awesome. I have a $50 donation here from oh, wow. Amboss, and they put that very generous donation towards unlocking our last bonus game, The Wacky World of Miniature Golf, cutscene percent. I also have a $15 donation here from Sam, and he says, Hi to all players and creators from the English and Japanese Discord server. Thank you for being awesome. Oh, that's great to hear. That's so, oh, that's so cool. I'm very glad. I'm, a, I'm very happy that people are enjoying this, uh, this exhibit. It's cool to be a part of it as well. I do want to point out that we are now less than $1,100 from hitting $40,000 raised for Alzheimer Fondant. Damn. Closer and wow. closer. Keep at it, people. This is great. As you this one see, is a <laughs> yeah. this one is a gimmick chart. I need to be I really focused on that. Just about to mention that you can see that there's a lot of like tempo changes and like wacky scrolling. The, um, this song was made for. Let me check. Uh, made for. Made for. BOS. Yeah, 2016. BMS of Fighters 2016. And the team in particular, uh, because BMS of Fighters is a team-based event where three people go together to uh, put out three entries. For the team, uh, and their team like game, uh, their team uh, theme. That's tricky to say. Team theme was to make gimmick charts. So every single chart in their team from their team are all like these sorts of like ridiculously gimmicky charts with like crazy tempo changes and uh, weird like animations. This is the only case where you actually have to memorize quite a bit of the chart to yeah. be able to play it well. You're doing pretty well, though. Yeah, you're doing absolutely fantastic. 
It's very exciting to see because I love like I actually love watching people play gimmick charts. It's so cool because it's so different. I had to spend so much time in practice mode to learn all the changes to understand the song well. God. But it paid off. It paid off. Gimmick yeah. charts uh, usually do require some level of memorization and familiarity with the chart. There is very little gimmick charts that you can sight read and do well on. Mm. So props, props to Kaza for going out of Yeah, the that's that's a lot more impressive than I might seem on the surface. Yeah, everyone, for sure, for sure. everyone, sour please for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I have problems with the chart from time to time, but I just could not skip it. The power of harmony. <laughs> oh, I love when uh, when people use like very cheesy vocal samples. I know, <laughs> I know right? It's, really it's such a trope. It's a big BMS trope, mostly because uh, the most BMS creators aren't actually familiar with English, at least as far as I know. Well, and, most uh, of them are from Japan. Yeah. So, so uh, we'll use vocal samples. I think, I think there is a song that samples Gordon Ramsay. That might be the I, case. I, I actually don't know which song that might be though. I, I want to hear that now so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wish I knew which one it was. Uh, I gotta find it. There's a I lot of meme songs. Like they even have their own like uh, meme, like a BMS event for creating BMS memes. Which is called, uh, uh, as a play on the BMS of Fighter series, it's called BMS of Foon. It doesn't happen every year, but it happens sometimes, and we're praying for the next one to be arranged soon. <laughs> It'll be great. They that would be fun. fun. That would be really fun. Damn, look at those crashes. Yeah. As you might assume, because the scratch, uh, the turntable, isn't a key that you push down, getting the timing right on it is quite tricky. Because you have to get intimately familiar with how the scratching works, and then you have to like learn how to scratch back and forth, and then you have to be able to time that correctly so that you actually get the best uh, ratings. And timing on the scratch is as strict as timing on the keys Very for most good. clients. I think some clients might uh, add a bit more leniency on the scratch, but not always. But it's still quite strict, nonetheless. It's, it's crazy because each of these sides could be its own like fully-fledged uh, single-play chart. That is very true, yeah. Especially at uh, very, very high levels. Um, yeah. It's worth mentioning that there are only two or three DP players that are... Um, hang on, let me rephrase this. Um, the difference between an average DP player and the best of the best is insane. It's not mm. as linear as the SP community, simply because DP is just a different beast to learn, and many people are very scared of it at, at, at first. That's why, um, that's why generally speaking, there are not as many DP players um, mm. as there are SP players, but I think that's a little bit on the point, because I think DP is awesome, and I think more people should try and get into it. When you start getting into it, it it's not as interesting. That's hmm. There are a lot of like beginner packs, uh, and a lot of people uh, go out of their way to make beginner charts as well for their songs. So there, there is a lot of options for getting into it, this, like despite how hard it looks. And that's that's very cool. Like uh, the BMS community does a lot of like uh, things to. Uh, be able to get beginners more into the game because it is a bit tricky to get into it because first you have to like know about it in the first place which is quite hard because the game is so obscure without any like central community central hub for the entire like community and its content and then you have all these hard charts that everyone is playing and, uh, and uh, you really don't see people playing the easy charts too often but they do exist I mean, that's how I started as well. Mm -hmm. There was barely anything to me, uh, for me to play, you know, when I was looking for an easy chart, but eventually... <laughs> the better you play, the more you have to... Cho the bigger choice you have, right? Yeah. That's true. I remember when I started playing BMS back in 2010, I downloaded the BMS Starter Pack 2009, which came bundled with a uh, now outdated version of Lunatic Grave 2. 
And I was grinding Lapis by Shiki like all day. <laughs> I think I had like several hundred plays by the end of like a week. <laughs> because I just love the song that much and I was so excited to like play the game. It was fun times. And there's a lot of music in BMS oh. in general that makes me so nostalgic. Good play. Nice. Yeah, this thing can be so tiring in the end. Clutch. Is now a good time for donations? Absolutely. Of course. Go ahead. All right, we have an $89 donation here from Nance who says, so close to 40K and we've never been closer to miniature golf either. Why don't we try to hit those two for a bit more ESA in our lives? And with that, we are only $1,000 away from Damn. hitting $40,000 raised for Alzheimer Fondant. That's great. Do we have time for one more? Yes. Sure. All right, I have $5.73 here from Werner and Doc, who say, greetings from Bimini Poland League community. Werner and Doc here, good luck on your excellent plays, Kazo and Janers. Yeah, thank oh, wow. you guys. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so here's a, um, here's a quite popular song, to put it uh, mildly. Uh, the artist behind this is called Sakusho. Uh, he's from Japan, obviously, and he's quite famous in rhythm games in general, like across several games. And several of you who play other rhythm games might be surprised to know that this is the origin of uh, his song, of Destroyer, this exact song. It's yeah, cool. That's a good thing that you mentioned that, Dolphin, because there are a lot of popular songs that have been licensed to a variety of more popular rhythm games that are Absolutely. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, the most infamous example of this would be Freedom Dive by C. Or Z. Yeah, or Sai. Sai. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one knows how to pronounce his name. Most people know Freedom Dive. Most people don't know that it originated from BMS. Yeah, it's actually from like 2006. It's really yeah. old. But the really version old. most people are familiar with is from his 2012 album, which is like a giant remaster of the song. Right, very true. So, uh, there's a lot of songs. Uh, you mentioned um, RCL from Umineko as well. That's yeah. also uh, from BMS, but then later included into Umineko, which is really cool to see BMS just seeping into a lot of different places. That's very true. The, the wide variety, the wide variety and categories um, of music in this game pretty amazing and the interesting part about that is that most of them are very timeless if you were listening to them today you would you would never guess that some of these songs were made in 1999 or something yeah i mean cranky uh, an artist still licensing out uh, party for you even to this day and that song is from like 99 98 or something it's really old Oh god, the guitar solo in the song is so hard. <laughs> <sighs> in fact, I got a PB on this today when I was practicing, so... <laughs> oh! <laughs> nice. Very good. Not right now, unfortunately, but still, I think it's okay. GG. Getting a double A, even like on double play mode, in general, is really impressive. Yeah, for sure. You know, since I switched to Bitaraja, it's been increasingly difficult for me to get good ranks, so at least I can go for the clears. Oh. I had so many A's right now when I'm playing this game. Mm. Oh, we're going to play a very notorious song now. Yeah. I... <laughs> this song, I mean, not to like, talk poorly of it, but like, it was a slightly controversial during the event. Oh, because yeah. it Because it was like, because a lot of people kept giving it like, poor scores, because they thought it was like, a very lazy job done by Leaf because Leaf people have such high spec expectations for Leaf. But uh, this song is actually really fun, though. It's it's yeah. cute, it's fun, and it's very like the gimmick of it is actually really cool. You'll see the gimmick of it. So interestingly enough, that this was uploaded to YouTube. YouTube actually marked the song as a children's video, so a lot of children were watching. Oh, and you'll see why that is a problem very soon. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, there's nothing not safe for work in this song. Just to mention, just to say that right no, now. Is, there's nothing not safe for work in this. It's I just think children should not be watching this video. It's just that it's a bit spooky. <laughs> It's a, it's honestly a funny song though. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think like when you break it down and you kind of put the gimmick aside of it, I think it's a, it's a great song. Yeah, it is actually a really cool song. It was just very misunderstood when it first released. Yeah, I'm sure like if I were to be uh, somebody that tried to rape this song, I would listen to 10 seconds of it and be like, wow, this is boring. Hmm. And then just quit out, you know what I mean? But yeah, I get it. It, it, it builds up a lot and it hmm. kind of grows on you over the time. Uh, and it's also been licensed to a number of uh, other music games. Oh yeah, that too. It is very popular across the world. It is. Be all right to do some donations right now? Sure, yes. of course. I have a $10 donation here from Ramen, who says, Watching Kazo play on the dual controller always blows my mind. And uh, that particular donation, of course, went towards unlocking our wacky world of miniature golf bonus game. I would like to say also, we are sitting at only $985 from reaching $40,000 donated for Alzheimer Fonden. We have time for one more? Sure. Yes. Uh, Klywink give us $5 and says, Be money, Poland, rise up. <laughs> I'm always surprised by how big the community in Poland is because I never really experienced the community there myself. But then I keep meeting people who are from Poland and play rhythm games. I wouldn't say it's very big, but it's very tight-knit, for sure. Yeah. By the way, if anyone remembers Exhibition from 2020, this is the same song, but uh, six levels higher. Oh. <laughs> You've improved since last. <laughs> yeah. The improvement is real on Kaza. You can get yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's, really, it's really cute how this is a Mario Paint song. You know, I'm hoping that Bimani Pullen will rise up with a $5 donation train. <laughs> In particular. Oh, Bimani Pullen is already at the top. I hope everyone is uh, enjoying the exhibition as much as we are, because this is great fun. And I hope a lot of people feel inspired to try out the game. Yeah, that is uh, probably my main goal with this um, charity. I, I really want to kind of show what this game really is to a larger audience because um, it is kind of hard to get into, mostly because it's a pain to set up. But honestly, once you've got it down, it's not that bad anymore. And you'll have tons of fun for literally no money. This game yeah. costs nothing. You pay nothing. And it is playable on keyboard, so you actually don't have to pay anything. Exactly. You could switch over to controller, but you don't have to. The amount of keyboard players is very similar to the amount of controller players. So, hmm. Yeah. Goddamn, a triple A. That's, I, that's crazy. Yeah, I would be really sad if I couldn't get it. I am a god. <laughs> yeah. Shoutouts to my friend Dexter, who provided me with all these backgrounds. <laughs> you can see all the results for you. Yeah. I noticed that. Really funny. The game. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at donations and then I looked up at that background. <laughs> 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 just not ready. Go ahead if you have anything. Yeah, sure. I was not ready. Well, I have a $20 donation here from Anonymous. No comment, just generosity. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for your $20. And that one went towards unlocking our last incentive, our bonus game, The Wacky World of Miniature Golf. We are only $2,275 away from unlocking that one. And again, reminder, we're only $985 away from Damn. reaching $40,000 for Alzheimer Fondin. That's crazy. So close. I just had to pick at the whole song eventually. Yeah, uh, actually, this is really fun because there is a lot of Toho music in BMS because there actually is a event series specifically de uh, dedicated to making Toho remixes and making them into BMS. 
It's uh, it's called Toho Ondan Yugi. Uh, it, it's, it's in Japanese, and it's like a play on words, as in like, I think it's like a festival and like party and or like a festival and uh, music. I'm, but I'm no Japanese expert, so do not take my word for it, though. <laughs> but it, the point is that there's there is a lot of Toho music because there's even like events dedicated for it. And anyone can host an event, really. You just need a website and uh, somewhere to upload songs. Because there's like, there's no authority on who can host any BMS events. It's just, That's it's great. all community stuff. That's the cute thing about BMS, it's, it's all community stuff. Everything very that's made. Specialized. And I can't, I just, I know we said it before, but like, it can't be stressed enough. Very nice. Okay, and the song yeah. I'll play right now is gonna be the last one and the most difficult I have in the set. I'm not really oh. sure if I'm not gonna Ooh. butcher it too much, but hopefully, hopefully it will sound okay. That's, <laughs> That's the most I can All say. All right, is there a time to read some donations before of you course. start that last song? Yes. Of course. Okay, I have a $5 donation here from Door3K who says, Hey guys, incredible showcase. Great job to the three of you. Nice choice of charts, Kazo. Thank you. And I have one more donation here for fifty dollars from Anonymous, who just says less than three. Aww. <laughs> and that puts us at nine hundred thirty dollars away from reaching that forty thousand dollars for Alzheimer Fonden. Forty thousand dollars. Oh, that's so crazy. I hope you get to the goal. I really do. This song is very, very catchy. Yeah. Very cute. I think this was either the winner or close to winning during its event. So it's important to note that um, one of the things DP charting meta does is adding a lot of staircases. Uh, performing staircases on, on the one hand is specifically pretty difficult. Mm. So as you can see, Kazo is just really going all out on the staircase and really hitting them pretty well. Um, mm. It's, it's hard to underestimate. It's, it's pretty easy to underestimate the difficulty of these patterns when you see them live on a video. But um, while you perform it, it, it I, I feel like it's, it's definitely a lot harder than it looks. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of technique involved. Yeah. Like hard tune technique. It is all of this muscle memory and your twitch reflex within your fingers. Mm. And uh, training that to perform what you see on screen is, uh, it takes a long while, let's just put it that way. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy, but uh, you can get there if you start today. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'll be seeing you guys on Discord soon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really, really hope that more people, more, especially more Westerners, get interested in, uh, in BMS because the Western community isn't too big, but it's uh, very tightly knit and it's very active. That is true. It is very tight. <sighs> nice, nice, Kazo. Great really job. Cool. Yeah, all right. At least that is still an A. I was so afraid yeah. I'm gonna fall below. So I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. Clearly. All right. That was really uh, good. So it's gonna be time. I believe I took like a little bit less than 30 minutes, hopefully. So it's gonna be, you know, subestimate. <laughs> but I don't know what else to say. Thank you so much for having us here because we had a blast, obviously. Thank yeah. you so much. A huge shout out to Eventide, my friend who provided me the music that is playing right now, you know, for the song selects. Shout out to the entire BMS community who made all this possible just because, you know, all these songs that I have right now, as I said, 800 gigabytes, I had to pick something. So <laughs> <laughs> it was not easy, but they were so such a bangers. All right. Uh, I guess that's everything from us, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. Uh, a little shout out to the BMS Cab people and uh, <laughs> a big, big, big thank you to uh, Dolphin for coming along with us. Oh, for thanks that. for inviting me. Yeah, it was, thank it you was guys an up. honor, honestly. Honor, thank you so much. All right. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and maybe sparked some interest in BMS. Hope to yeah, see if you, if you like what we do, you know where to find us. <laughs> yeah, if you right. want to get help, just don't be afraid to contact us. Exactly. 
people in the BMS community are more than welcome to help newcomers get into this game. So, Indeed. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, it. so much, Kazo and Yonders, for that incredible showcase of the music source. And we're going to go to a short intermission. Coming up on deck, we have Audio 98 with Bugsnack.